record. Great guys, how are we doing? Hope everyone's well. Um, so um, this is another case study sort of session with two great guys who've been training me for a while again. Um, we're going to talk about their journeys, their progression, what they've gone through, how they felt about their journey. Um, and hopefully that will help for some men who are watching, just realizing how or what it takes to make sure um, they show up and and actually make them really understand that it's not always as straightforward as it can be, but the benefits of showing up and putting yourself through a journey and a process is really, really worth it. All right, guys. So I just want to int uh, introduce the guys. So I've got uh, Rich and I've got Stu. Rich, do you just want to introduce yourself, what you do, your age, your background, kids, etc. Yeah, sure. So I'm, I'm Rich, uh, 39, soon to be 40. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, have three kids uh the most recent one now seven months old so revisiting uh, the area of uh, no sleep and uh, no time but um which is where jb and uh, the mastermind comes in i'm a bd manager for an international law firm and um again that's a, a recent thing through the planning and, and the work that we've done that i'm pleased to say is uh, now part of what i do amazing Amazing. And, and, and it's great as well, because we are very similar in terms of our journey of a newborn. <clears throat> I would say quite like, you know, I never thought I'd have a nine month year old at 43. I thought I'd be like packing them off almost outside the house. So um, it's great to see how you've adapted as well. Simon, sorry, Simon Stewart. I've got in my head that it's Simon Stewart to so tell me about you and your charity and what you do. Uh, well, I'm Stuart. I'm 55. Um, and I haven't got any kids left at home. Winning. Uh, my, mine are in the twenties now and moved out and, and living close by. And after putting me through years of hell, have turned into responsible young adults. Wow. Um, I've been just over 20 years working in the charity sector as a chief exec. Um, <coughs> great time, but in the era of massive funding cuts and government cuts i find myself redundant in the last week oh, um so with a blank page in front of me at the moment um okay. and thanks to the mastermind that is an opportunity not a problem yeah i love that and i love the way that you direct that because that's a, that for you and, and you're well ingrained in a system and structure. That's how you flip it, right? This is yeah. an opportunity. Instead of it being a problem, you've already identified this as a, as a brand new chapter, brand new start. Let's go. I love that. And um, we'll, we'll touch more on that a hundred percent. So um, Rich, what we've kind of done with some of the lads is just have a get of a backstory. Um, and, and so I'm going to come to you first, Rich. And when you first started to realize that you might need some re-education or some guidance or redirecting what was happening kind of in your life that made you feel like just made you stop and go i need to do something about this i need to i need to change the way that i'm living my life right now was it a build up of sequences or or things that happened in your life or was it just one main thing that just kind of ambushed you yeah sure i think i think actually for me is that there's a you know, being part of the mastermind, you realize there's some people with some very specific stories about where they got to and how they got to where they did. For me, I actually think it kind of occupied this middle ground where actually it's, we, we kind of refer to it sometimes as kind of death by a thousand cuts where you don't really kind of see it happening. It's a gradual, gradual point that you get to. For me, you know, the first part of my adult life, I think, was, was focused on career and did really well on that aspect but then we had then I got married then we had kids and for me it was trying to find that balance and to be honest with you I didn't really get that I thought I got it but I really hadn't got it and then it gets to the point where actually you're you're continued climb up the career ladder and you realize actually I, I don't want this because actually there's, there's other conflicting priorities for me it came to a head during uh, the lockdown period where actually all semblance of routines were, were gone and um just realized that I was kind of stagnating. There wasn't really a plan. You know, I was taking jobs for the sake of, for the wrong reasons. And they were driving me to extreme amounts of stress. Uh, I wasn't spending the right time with the family. I wouldn't say I was enjoying my job either. And, um, you know, yeah, I think all the pillars that we focus on were, were kind of completely gone at that point. Yeah. So, um, and, that, and that's kind of where, you know, I got to and thought, 
I, I, I'm more than this and I need to kind of reframe it. And then I saw one of your ads. So <laughs> that's what everyone says. At least yeah. I know they're working. Um, so would you say that at that point or going around in that cycle that you were just talking about that maybe 90% of your life at that point was consumed with obligations to work or trying, uh, trying to be absorbed with work and your mindset was work and, and then 10% you're trying to fit health relationships and other things. Yeah. I mean, I, the way I describe it is, is that I was, you know, if you imagine you're in a, you're in a job that you don't really like, uh, but, but it pays well. Yeah. And, you know, I think from my perspective in every area of my life, rather than kind of focusing on, on opportunity and, and, and a plan and somewhere and a vision of where you want to be, I was generally focused on, you know, avoiding the next problem and kind of almost in stress mode all the time. Yeah. So actually you don't really appreciate anything. There's no gratitude at all in terms of what you've got. You're just fighting the next battle. Um, and it feels like that. Do you, like we use the saying, don't we, especially the first book, it's like stop existing. We, is that your description or your analogy or your vision of just existing? Yeah, if I if I look at what I have now in comparison to what I have then, yeah, um, yeah, it was very much existing and serving a function, and, and and actually I completely got wrapped around my head completely the wrong way about what it means to be a good father and a good husband, right. um, because actually I'm not trying to be hard on myself. I don't think I was that great. Okay, we'll definitely come on to that. I definitely want to talk about that, so we'll come on to that. But thank you for that background. So, um, Stu, same question to you. Was, was, it, was it a build-up of um, experiences or was the one main thing that just punched you in the face and you went, oh, my God, I'm, I'm sick of this? What was your story? Two main things, really. First one, I didn't deal with it right. Second one, I stumbled across your advert. <laughs> <laughs> Doing well. <laughs> so I guess, you know, the background, externally, I was Mr. Average. Married, three beds, semi, two kids, Ford Mondeo. Um, externally looking like I was doing all right and I was I was succeeding at work you know successes etc etc <laughs> um but actually I was a miserable kid and um everything was somebody else's fault and I would take that out on people at home um I embraced the pity party world-class standard um It'll always be better next week, et cetera, et cetera, the usual stuff. And I think the first real um, thing that hit me um, was back 14 years or so ago. Um, my wife went away for three weeks on a, an exchange trip looking at gang culture in Jamaica, Kingston, Jamaica. But a fantastic opportunity. But I was at home with the kids first time and... Um, they were right horrible little shits for that week at that period of time and it just hit me like a brick all i was was went to work and um, being a mediocre dad and there was nothing else there was no one to talk to i was totally embroiled in that and there was nothing else um so that kind of prompted a little bit of a midlife challenge and i kind of i got off the sofa joined a running club and went from fat bloke to marathon runner in just over a year it's amazing um and that changed some stuff but it, it didn't change everything and it didn't change the the attitude and the grumpiness and etc cetera, etc cetera. and then three years ago was the other big thing which i was involved in a big road accident um i was on a pedestrian crossing and got hit by a range rover that didn't stop at the red lights i wasn't expected to survive the ambulance journey and then the initial prognosis when I survived the ambulance journey was a permanent lack of independence. Um, but for all my faults, I'm stubborn and resilient um, and was quite determined. And eventually coming home after more than a month in hospital, I watched two episodes of Homes Under the Hammer and I had to get back to work. Um, and I Didn't went have to back get in. Back to work. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, I went back in on a in a wheelchair etc um but the fact that i'd survived it um made me determined to make the most of life um and embrace life and do life better did it make you more resilient i think it probably did but i didn't know how 
I didn't know what to do. And that's when I stumbled across the man coach. Yeah. And I'd tried other things in the past, but they kind of set you up to fail because there's, you kind of feel like you should be achieving everything at once. Um, and the man coach was different. 1% a day. It's manageable, it's achievable, it's realistic. And the pillars um, of relationship and personal development and health and work and looking at the bigger context. Um, and the real challenge for me was that kind of um, focus on taking personal responsibility, not worrying about things that you can't control. Um, and just got stuck in. And I don't think you notice at the time. The, it's almost the reflection note, would you the, say? Like, it's on reflection, you know. So for me, you know, a year or so in, another shock with a, a very unexpected change of circumstances in work. But actually, I'm handling this in a completely different way to what I would have done 12 months ago or 18 months ago. Um, and you see then the, the, the growth and the development love it um, and well done to you like you know it's a great story as well so thank you for sharing that as well um so do you think that um so we'll come back to you um rich do you think that you've become more resilient through the process and and and, and if you do um what do you think has contributed to that like because i, I just want to make something super clear here as well like Stu mentioned it as well we're not all on permanent wins here. It's not like, oh man, we live in Disneyland. It's not like the brotherhood is Disneyland, right? We come in there and all of your problems are solved. We still face a multitude of problems and things still happen, right? There are days when we still have an off day and it's all right to do that. And, you know, what for me personally, I think is important for me to share my losses as well as all of the wins with you guys and with everyone that follows, whether through podcasts or whatever it is. Because the realistic side of this whole personal development thing is, is that actually we're human beings, every single one of us. And I don't believe there's a coach out there. I don't believe there's a human being that's flawless or, go, or doing this unscathed, right? So I believe, I'm a big believer in mental resilience, in mental toughness, in robustness, and, and like taking the situations that we face, i.e. like, being made redundant or have being a new father again. And how do we flip it? How do we make this work for us? How's the opportunity? So Rich, do you feel like your mental resilience has built robustness? And what do you think has been the contributing fact to that? <laughs> so, yeah, I'd say without a doubt, I think going back to what Stuart said, um, I think it's around, um, one of the things I would say is that 1% a day is really important because actually You'd be, you don't really notice 1% a day until you kind of get 365 days down the year and then you look back and think, oh, yeah, I've actually moved quite a long way now. And, and with, with that, I think there's the resilience aspect. So probably like just to give it an example. Um, so in our last quarter, in terms of objectives or, or kind of what we were focused on, one of, for me and my health side was I really wanted to complete the, the Goggins 4x4x48, four by four by which turned out to be quite the challenge when it came down to it um mentally that was tough um i pushed my put myself through it and that isn't really the resilient part although i was impressed that actually by the end it was purely mental i think the physical aspects of it were just kind of out the window at that point having finished that i found out that i damaged both the ligaments and the tendons in my left foot uh through trying to run 48 miles um and um you know in the past that would have thrown me and actually i would have really struggled with that um and I probably would have given up on, on, you know, I would have rested and left it. And, and what I've done is actually sought out kind of help on that. But actually, I never stopped my exercising my health from that perspective. So, you know, I'm not a massive fan of swimming, but I found out that's something that I could continue and I could still maintain my fitness. So I'm, I'm swimming four times a week. And it sounds like something really small, but actually something like that in the past would have stopped me from exercising. And then I would have gone back to square one. I think the second example is those conversations you have with, with your other half where actually you know something's wrong. Um, you can pick up on the cues and actually being, being, and what I mean by resilience on this is actually where you explore that and you find out there is something wrong. In the past, that would have caused an argument because I would have naturally been more defensive over it. 
and we had one the other day where actually I thought, you know, my wife's on maternity leave, I'm at work. It's been, and I've just started a new job. She's been really supportive and kind of left me just to do whatever I want. But there's, there comes a point where that has to balance. And I really hadn't spotted it. And she brought it up. And actually, the resilience in being able to actually listen to someone say, actually, you're not where you think you are. And, um, and to be able to say, actually, OK, let's sort that out. Let's not. But in the past, that would have been an argument, probably a day of not talking. And, you know, and these are these. But for me, the resilience and the little things are really important because actually that's what keeps you going. Your day to day is important. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And I think that also shows an element of managing your ego as well, because we get fixated in our work. We don't like crit criticism. We don't like criticism as it is. Right. So like when we are faced with it, we how dare you like, you know, that entitlement like to say that. And I and I and I with you on that sometimes. You know, I can I can f slip into the work thing. You know, like this week's a launch. I know it's a big week. Last week was a big week with a challenge, and then sometimes you just miss like just simply helping put one of the kids to bed. Like just like put the phone down and recognizing that actually, you know, you need to do a little bit just to push a little bit more here and acceptance in, in that. And I and I like the way that you were talking about the process, doing doing the goggins, the the running, and putting yourself through that. And I feel. And as you know, and through the teachings, the way that we build mental resilience is to have those micro breakthroughs, right? It's like you're having that conversation in your head and it's going, just stop now, just quit, just you've done enough. That would do you. And that's the difference between going there and going, go fuck yourself. I'm fucking breaking through here. Like, and, and that, that's what I say to myself. So when I feel like, oh, I just... I literally can't do that post that I need to tonight, or I just can't do that live video, or I just don't think I can get down there and go for a swim. It's like, dude, go fuck yourself, get down there, you like be the leader of your life. And I think that promotes that, it's that elite operator identity. You know, I talk about the identity. When I, I actually wrote a post on it today, when you walk, when I used to work and walk into a pub when I was a kid, young 20, I'd always walk through that door with my head down, like, and I would always go and find the quietest place because I just feared judgment or I just feared confrontation, you know, <clears throat> and I didn't want to get involved in it. And then I joined the military, went through the training and it changed me internally to be resilient. So that when I walk in, I can hold my head up high and have that confidence. So I think resilience and identity together, when you connect the dots there between those two, I think it really presents your character and your principles and your value as a man about who you are and those things that you just described are a perfect example of that a bit of your identity shifting over over the last couple of years and i you know i've been lucky enough to watch you grow through that way and see the shifts in 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 that admittance and and that acknowledgement that i'm not where i should be and you did it the other day right with the, with the q2 plans you're like i've not shown up like i should do but then you didn't sulk about it you just did it and got it done and I think that's great as a great management of the ego as well. I think the, uh, the one thing that, that sticks to my head, that's just an easy reminder. If, if, if you, if you're not feeling that resilient and the quite often for me that the, the one sticking point is still, you know, I'm a hundred percent in terms of my morning routines, getting there sometimes. I mean, if I'm really feeling weak that we have, a, I have an alarm app that requires me to scan a 3d barcode in the kitchen. So I have to get out of bed to start to stop it. And, um, but but aside from technology enabling that, I think for me, it's that, it's that one sentence that you say a lot of the time, which is, if, you, if you're not going to commit to this or be resilient over it, then, then what's your alternative? And quite often, I, I'm not a massive fan of what the alternative looks like. Nice. So. It's not pretty. It's not pretty, right? Um, good stuff. I like that stuff there. So, Stu, um, I think you come off a background of already having resilience, um, probably with the car accident as well, and, and that... And, and that um, recreation of a guess of probably an identity you probably like went through an identity tra a transition there where you had to kind of have that acceptance um and re-establish yourself as a man i guess after maybe going through low confidence low self-esteem maybe you can expand on that and maybe you can give us some idea about how you feel your since maybe joining us your mental resilience has maybe evolved through through the years <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think the immediate period post accident, there was a lot of physical resilience. Yeah. 
um, you know, I wasn't prepared to sit in a chair for the rest of my life and have people do things for me. Um, you know, and I wasn't, it wasn't certain where I would, whether I would walk again. I'm running 5Ks now and doing the gym five days a week. Love it. Um, That's resilience. That is yeah. like, without doubt, that's some fucking breakable resilience, and, and everyone should. So that was that was showing up at the physio, and then doing the exercises three times a day in between every appointment, which yeah. apparently not many people yeah. do. Um, but you know that was it. But I think you know the the key for me from the man coach and the mastermind has been that mental resilience, um, and transferring that into other aspects of life the accident was you know three years on bizarrely i'm actually quite grateful for it um i get that I which, don't get it. it's probably made you hasn't it i think it probably has you know i was all right i was mr average i got by i wouldn't say life was you know it wasn't a party i wasn't i wasn't content I don't think, um, you know, when the accident forced me into that physical resilience and a lot of that will be mental resilience as well, because it was an act of will to be determined to do those things. Um, but actually what it was, was the stimulus to find the, the tools and the strategies and the methods to take that resilience into the workplace, to take that resilience into my, the, the bigger health picture to take that resilience into relationships and family um, and into personal development and yeah and look at myself as well um you know my marriage has been better in the last few years than it ever was amazing you know it, it wasn't on the rocks but it was you know you just get by um you know it, it's a different place um you know, I wouldn't lose sleep over everything that was happening at work. Um, you know, it was just another day, another pile of shit. Just get on with it. Yeah. Take a deep breath, do what needs to be done. Um, stopping the procrastination. You know, just do it. Yeah, I love it. Um, I love it. And, and, and it, I think a lot of people have gone through something that like you've gone through. You know, I look at some of the things that I've gone through and I think... I don't think I would change anything because I am where I am and I have the mind that I have now as a result of the battle scars. Like, and I think, <clears throat> excuse me, through our battle scar, through our lives, we collect battle scars, don't we? But yeah. those battle scars either create us and define us or they become the root of your excuses. And I'm often so inspired by the Paralympics. Um, because that is mental resilience and robustness and toughness at its highest level, right? It's like, well, I've lost an arm or I've lost my sight or I have some form of restriction in my physical ability. However, I'm showing up at the highest level possible. And I think that if those guys can do it, anyone can do it. And, and, I, and I feel that's so important to understand. But it, in some respects, it needs drumming into people or it needs some form of education or process because what we don't do is build mental resilience sitting on the fucking sofa watching netflix with a beer in hand moaning that it's everyone else's fault or going around in a cycle of fucking chaos and just keep doing it over and over again it's like punching yourself in the face right and it's like if if i was to start punching someone in, in the face would you sit there and take it you definitely wouldn't, you'd start scrapping back. And that's my theory on resilience is that if life's punching you in the face, why aren't you punching back? Do you know what I mean? And, and, it, and it's having something, a spark, a connection, a will, a drive to just like, just come this little bit higher than what you've been showing, jump that little higher, reach that little bit more, embrace it, go through the turmoil of the emotions and the trauma that it might cause you and then go, right, I've, I've settled at that level. Now let's go up a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And each time we're going up a little bit more, we're rebuilding or strengthening that mental fortitude every single time, right? For me, that's mental resilience. Um, and I think you are a fantastic experience, um, uh, study for that, a, a fantastic case study for that scenario, you know, that, 
that accident in some ways resurrected you. 100%. Hundred percent. Yeah. I, yeah. And, 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 it, and, it, and, and I can see it. And when you talk about it, you can see it in your face as well. And you can feel it. It's the making of you as, as, as mad as that is. And I think that in some respects, COVID in the last two years and the way that we've lived and the way that we've evolved has really opened up people's eyes to resilience. Like, you know, for many of us, probably life was quite comfortable and then bang, there's change here. And people don't realize actually how resilient they are until they're pushed. Until you're backed into that corner, you're like, man, I really need to face this. How do we deal with this? How do we flip this? Some really good examples there. So Rich, for you, um, what does the year hold for you in terms of your own development and your goals and your planning and why? So, well, this year is pretty much building on last year, having been with you for, for over a year now and also being part of the Accelerator. Um, so, you know, last year was massive for me in terms of getting, getting a new job and getting back into an industry that I wanted to be in, having, having a new child, a new baby, um, and also kind of having done things like the half, half Ironman as well last year. So this, this year was very much about building on that. So for me, um, obviously, I want, I want to kind of bed into my new role in the right way. And for me, that's actually kind of like letting go of a lot of bad habits um, to do with work. Um, and focusing on the positive and I'm, I'm pleased to say that you know at the moment and i'm sure for this for the future you know i i'm on now i'm now at a point on a sunday where i look forward to work on a monday which has just been amazing missing for so long and i just want to build on that i don't want to kind of go too crazy um but build something for the future in terms of my career um for i've put off and off and off in terms of extending the house uh, then i started work on that now uh, so i want that complete um this year as well so that should be done actually in the next quarter's plans actually um and i think for me it was also a time of being able to spend time with the family um and so the uh, and like you know be able to go on holiday with them and actually kind of switch off and spend some time with them um as well from a health side as well obviously there was the the goggins challenge um and then i want to also get a full marathon done so for me it's very much around last year was so intense in terms of actually kind of the, the amount of focus on those 1% wins. Um, I'm really trying to kind of build on that. So it's, so the foundations are kind of set permanently. Um, not that they ever really are, but it, for me, it, it, they don't sound huge. Um, but it's about sustain being sustainable in terms of doing this for, for the future as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And that's just really, and that's nothing outrageous, is it? It's just a, a pro, the process. It's the journey, and it and it's keeping yourself aligned to that path, right? Because there's this distractions, uh, and there's shiny objects, and there's things that are trying to pull you left, right, and centre. But it's just being clear, literally being clear on that vision of what you want. Which is yeah, great. absolutely. I think you know, trying to overcomplicate it when you know means that you there's not enough focus on certain areas and things like making sure my morning routines evening routines are in place um actually sometimes they require more work certainly in the last month with with the injury you know um i think my, it's been harder work on those aspects in terms of trying to keep them in, in play and, and the good thing about it going back to resilience is that is actually at least there's an awareness of it when you you, you don't lie to yourself anymore about when they go off track and you, you kind of get back on it so yeah um, yeah mate good love that so, Stu, you've got, I mean, you've got a blank page right now on one of the pillars. Yeah. So, what, what does the year hold for you, even with this curveball just coming into play? I mean, on the work front, I don't know, is the honest answer to that. We're in week one of looking at what's next. But I think, you know, where I'm at from the last year is that whatever that looks like, you know, I'm not defined by that anymore. I think previously I was defined by my work. That was who I was yep. um, completely. Um, and there was an element of that that was good. And that because of that, I enjoyed a lot of success and achievement. But I think, you know, I'm a more balanced person now as a result of the mastermind and the pillars, uh, particularly in terms of health and relationships. I haven't got personal development right yet um, but actually one thing for certain is as I'm looking at what's next I'm not going to compromise 
where I've come in the last year in terms of myself. And I'm not going to go for, for anything that's going to hinder the maintenance and ongoing growth in those pillars and the, the bigger picture. So I just tore up one job, job advert today because it, it would have just stopped Everything. a lot of that. I love that. Um, so, um, I mean, I know I'm lucky, you know, I'm at a stage, kids have gone, I've got enough money that I can't stop, but yeah. I don't have to rush. I don't have to rush and I don't have to, I don't have to earn the same amount again. Yeah. Um, you know, and my wife's really on board with that and the yeah. bigger picture, you know, you've mentioned this before about how people's other halves really appreciate the work that you do. Yeah. Um, she does. She's also JB, and she also jokes that um, you not you've not told me anything that she hasn't said for years. The only difference <laughs> is she hasn't sworn at me. Uh, it's funny, isn't it? And how she, you listen to you don't tend to listen to people closest to you, but like uh, you're always yeah. like some stranger who pops up in your advert. Yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, it was quite interesting doing my plans this quarter and, and trying to look ahead to the end of the year because I don't know. You know, I think at the end of the year, I want to be kind of getting settled into what's next. But yeah. um, I'm trying to push several doors at once. You know, do I go for the same thing again? And do I look for a similar role in another charity um, and just do the same thing again, which I could do? Um, or do I look to use the experience and the skills to go it alone and go more into a consultancy advisory and have a bit more control over how much I do and when I do it and where I do it? Um, that's, you know, that's another option um, or something completely different. So I'm, you know, just you, push, you're pushing it on. Phase, right? You're in that transition phase where you've got to kind of sit down and put all those plans together do the brain dump, but you're in a good position. You're in a good yeah. position where you're not rushing and you're not, you're not willing to compromise your lifestyle that you've worked really hard to build. For me. No, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm not rushing, but I'm not holding back. I, you know, I'm being really disciplined. You know, yeah. I still get up at the same time. I go to the gym, I'm back. I'm sat at the laptop before nine o'clock and I'm, I'm working on a job application or researching a different opportunity. So yeah, this is, it's only day three of doing that, so I don't know what the year holds for me. Um, I guess I just know it's not going to hold anything that's going to undo yep. the personal growth of the last 12 months. The test, though, right? Like, I always say to you guys, uh, everything that we do is always going to be a test for when something does crop up. Mm -hmm. And when something crops up and when something tries to distract us or is a problem or whatever it is, look at it as a test this is a test of everything you've learned and when i listen to you guys you're both super drilled like like listening to you it's like um it kind of reminds me of a trained soldier like and the difference between a trained soldier and someone who's just in basic training right you've got that mentality you just we used to call it the green mode like in the royal marines you just switch on the green bang and, well i certainly did and like when you need to show up in your head it's like my identity goes to Sergeant James Borman. Bang, Sergeant. I know that Sergeant James Borman, in, in a situation that's under pressure, he just switches it on. Like, and he's direct and he's confident, and every fear and everything disappears. And that's, I guess, my own elite operator, right? That's my, that's that mentality and identity that I that I form. And you guys have your own, and you sound well drilled in exactly what you want. So. To finish off with, we're going to wrap up. What I want you to do is give one piece of advice to anyone that's listening, a man that's listening um, who might be going through a cycle. Um, what I don't want you to do is turn around and say, oh, sign up. I just want you to turn around and say, from your own experience, what's one thing that you could pass on to another man that might they could take away today and help them? This is your opportunity to shine. Rich. On the okay, spot, so think, by the way. On the spot. <laughs> I think uh, from my... Um, from my own perspective, if I was going to give a piece of advice, it'd be to the people, it would be to the men who are sat somewhere in the middle. You know, we, there's, there's no one single point of, you know, of getting to a certain point where, you know, you have to make a change to some extent. You have to show resilience or, you know, what's the alternative for, for the people who actually 
it's not about just existing. I think for the people who are coasting, who could be doing more, is you know, you know that feeling. And whether or not you sign up and do something here, which is which is not the advice you want, for me, is don't ignore that feeling and start somewhere. Yeah. Um, because you know, you can ignore that feeling for three, four, five years, and the one thing you can't get back is time. Hundred percent, man. Wasted time. We did that this morning. Did you watch the rise to live this morning? Uh, I didn't know. Sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> but it's quite relevant to what I was talking about this morning, you know. And you know, in fact, go and read it. Like anyone watching, go and watch this morning's show on the Facebook page is is eye opening. A lot of res- uh, people resonate within it this morning. Um, Stu, what would you say? I have two bits of advice. I think one is definitely one percent. Yeah, 100%. realistic. It's achievable. Yeah. Um, that was the change. I think for me. Yeah, not trying to sort your life out in a week. One percent before you know it, it's changed drastically. And I think the other is one that really came up a few weeks ago and was very timely for me, which is about flipping the situation. Yeah, flip a negative to a positive, flip a problem to an opportunity. Yeah, um, yeah. absolutely. Just that. Stop. This is a problem. No, it's not. It's an opportunity. Yeah, I love that. Um, that really resonated with me and I, you know, referenced that and used that quite a bit. Yeah. <clears throat> I've just written that down to remind me for a post. So I, <clears throat> I really love that. And everything is op- opportunity. I always, I always, I truly believe it. Like, uh, you know, um, and it might, you might be facing the hardest adversity of your life. It might feel like, Oh my God, I am like on the cliff edge here. But I think like we've spoken about to reconfirm, those situations present you with an opportunity to shine and, and to break through just to, to, to find that next level character that maybe you didn't think that you had, you know? Um, so boys, I just want to thank you so much for being here. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. Um, what I see is two well-rounded drilled lads who really have embedded the basics who, who for me are surfing the wave rather than drowning in the wave. Uh, as, as I use that analogy, you know, you're on that process you're on top, you know, you're not getting dragged under, which is amazing to see. Um, and, I, and I thank you guys for your time. Thank you so much. Guys, if you're listening and you're listening to these lads and you're thinking, man, I, that's what I need, then obviously the 90 day movement is how we bring people into our world. You can work with people like Rich and Stu alongside them, be part of the brotherhood. Application forms in the link. Go and check it out if you want to. Um, thank you for watching.